I'm actually honored to be here with you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of floored and blown away when I see Christians who are actually engaged in a culture war and Christians who actually believe that that war can be won because we have a God and an ideology and the correct narrative that's been given to us in the scriptures that actually overpowers the forces of darkness and their false ideologies and narratives, and that it's actually possible. Welcome to the Conversations with Christians Engaged podcast. I'm your host, Bunny Pounds, the president of Christians Engaged. This ministry exists to awaken, motivate, educate, and empower our ordinary believers in Jesus Christ to do three things. To pray for our elected officials and our nation regularly. To vote in every election to impact our culture. And to engage in some form of civic education or involvement for the well-being of our nation. So thankful, Bunny, for what you do. A lot of people talk the talk, but you really walk the walk. There's nobody else I want to talk to about Jesus with than you. And I will stand and lock arms with this woman of God, Bunny Pounds, any day of the week. Uh, Bunny, you are a a new hero of mine. And I'm 100% behind something that Bunny Pounds is doing. Encourage her, pray for her, and be involved. Be part of Christians actively engaged. America is worth it. Now is the time. America needs your involvement. Please take our pledge to pray, vote, and engage. Join with a movement of other Christians that are doing these three simple things that can really impact this nation. Join us. Hey guys. Wow, what an amazing group of Christians engaged folks in the house. Well, you know, you got an exclusive invitation. We couldn't put this online. Um, This was such an amazing opportunity for us to host Kirk Cameron and Brave Books today. We were like, we had 10 days to put this together. So I appreciate you guys so much for coming out today. What an amazing time we're going to have. If you didn't know, I'm Bunny Pounds. I'm the founder and president of Christians Engaged. The number one question I got when I ran for Congress is, is that really your name? And it is. I was named after Billy Graham's daughter, Ruth. Uh, She also had the same name as her mother, so they nicknamed her Bunny. And my dad got born again watching Billy Graham on TV, and he thought that was cool. The second question is, why am I wearing pink and not red, white, and blue? Because I get tired of wearing red, white, and blue. (laughs) So I decided, since I had Kirk Cameron on my wall when I was 13 years old, I would wear pink for Kirk today. Um, It is exciting to be here with you guys. We're going to play our vision uh, mission video, if you haven't seen it, of what Christians Engage is about, and then I'll come up and introduce our guests. Hopeless about the state of America? Do you wonder what is happening and what can we do as Christians about the well-being of our nation? Let me say, God has a plan. There is an awakening happening right now in America. Christians Engaged was created to give us all hope and to empower the body of Christ across denominational lines with our marching orders to impact America from a kingdom perspective. Pray, vote, engage. Christians Engaged was born and why we are here is to help engage the Awakening Church, gather you and educate you to empower you to go out and change the world. First, we empower Christians around the nation to pray, vote, and engage through our unique tool, the Pledge. Registering voters and empowering prayer each week, we also give Christians practical instruction and reminders to vote in every election. We believe the church has a voice and that we are called to go to the ballot box and take our biblical values with us when we go. Second, we are educating and moving people to engage through our on-ramp to civic engagement seminar. This comprehensive seminar can be done online through our recorded curriculum or in person within a church or community. Lastly, we mentor Christians to help them fulfill the call of God on their lives as it relates to their civic duties. We do this through our church engagement, our many other classes and podcasts, writings, and our conferences. The founders of this republic gave us a gift and we have a responsibility to protect it and to keep it. 
Christians Engaged is here. Our ministry is growing every day because people like you don't just sit back and wait, but are proactively working to impact America. We are at a critical time in our nation. Uh, I truly believe that God has a purpose and a plan for this nation that is not done with it yet, but it's going to take people of faith across our nation engaging, participating, and being involved in it. And I'm telling each and every one of you, you have the light. What are you doing with your light? Lift your light on high and let us proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Lord and America's best days are still ahead. Join the Christians Engaged movement. Pray, vote, engage, change America. A praise report is that we're only four years old, guys, and 200,000 Christians are in our system now to pray, vote, and engage regularly around the country. We are building toward 1 million Christians before the presidential election, and over 2,000 Christians have gone through one of our long-form classes. Beyond the 30-second soundbite to the six- or eight-hour class on civics and biblical worldview, that is a praise report. Amen? So we are super excited because Christians Engage is all about saving the next generation. If we don't train the next generation on loving America and loving the Bible, we're in trouble. So we are honored. We actually partnered with Brave Books. They came to our conference a few years ago, and it's just been an honor to, to meet the next guest I'm going to introduce you to. Trent Talbot is the CEO of Brave Books. Trent is a follower of Jesus Christ, which fuels his role as a dedicated father and husband, and also his role in, as founder and CEO of Brave Books. Once a doctor, Trent left his career of helping people see better to helping the world see the importance of traditional family values better by founding Brave Books. As a visionary with a con contagious dedication to his work, Trent's genius storytelling has created a one-of-a-kind universe called Freedom Island. Trent's inspiration uh, stems from his wife and three children and a dream that they will not be in the minority with these values in future generations. Can you say amen? Will you welcome the CEO of Brave Books, Trent Talbot. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Well, um, the story of Brave Books started in June of 2020. And I was a happily practicing ophthalmologist, just doing cataract surgery every day and seeing people with dry eyes and glaucoma. And, uh, <laughs> and I was a new believer, newly married, and most importantly, just had my first daughter, Charlotte. She was born on June 22nd, 2020. And within the first three weeks of her being born, it's sort of like whenever you get a new car, you start to see your car everywhere on the highway. Well, I started to see this whole war on kids, um, just all the indoctrination everywhere. When, when she was born, Anti-Racist Baby was the number one book on Amazon. That trailer for the film Cuties had just come out. Uh, my best friend was gifted the latest Nancy Drew book, which had a trans character in it. It was just everywhere I turned. And for whatever reason, it just stuck with me. I couldn't get out of my head to the point where I would lay in bed just thinking about it. But I'm a, I tend to be a more solutions-oriented person, so I started to just think, like, all right, if somebody was going to try to turn the tide, like, what would be the best way to go about doing it? And this idea for Brave Books and Freedom Island and, and this overarching narrative of, of stories, a book a month, sort of just started to come to me. And, and eventually I left my career as an ophthalmologist and went for it. And the Lord just blessed, blessed it incredibly well. And, and we've got this amazing team. And it's been two and a half years We've been in over 200,000 homes, over 30,000 monthly subscribers, and um, but we've got a we've got a very mission-oriented team, and we're not we're not doing this just to fight. We we tend to like a fight, but we're we're not just here to fight in the culture war. We want to win, we really do. And just looking at the whole terrain of of what's going on with our kids, we feel like in order to win the culture war. We've got to win the screen. It, it's just such a big part of our culture, and there's no get, getting around it. You know, as much as I don't really like it, but that is the world that we're living in. And, and we, we as Christians, conservatives, are just getting 
demolished on the screen. Our values are, are nowhere to be seen. And, and our, our kids are being trained in, a, in, in values that we don't, we don't believe in. Um, over, since I started Brave Books, I've sort of become a student of stories. And, and I read all sorts of studies on stories and how they work. One study stood out to me. It's a, it, they took 140 undergraduate students and they broke them up in two groups. 70 read 30 minutes of Harry Potter. The other 70 read 30 minutes of Twilight. And then they surveyed the people that, the undergraduates that read. And the people that read Harry Potter viewed themselves as more likely to be able to move something with their mind. The, people, the kids that read uh, Twilight thought that their teeth were longer than the general population. There's just countless, countless studies like that, but what that teaches us is stories have this ability to change the way that we view ourselves because God gave us this ability to empathize, to get into somebody's position and to feel what they're going through. And, and kids especially have this just powerful ability. And the characters that our kids are looking up to and they're empathizing with, whether it's in a book or on screen, they're not the characters that we grew up, I grew up, you know, identifying with. They're, they're going through all sorts of things, whether it's trying to decide if they're a boy or a girl or whatever. And it's having an effect on our kids. When, when, they, when they relate to these characters for an extended period of time and lose themselves in a whole other world, they come back different. And, and so we felt like we need to, needed to give the kids of our generation stories that would build their character as opposed to leave them confused. Characters that they could look up to and, and would strengthen them. And um, so that's what, that's what we're doing. And um, I, I wanna show this short little video that will help give you a sense of why we decided to make the move. Um, to going from just books to, to getting into the television game. There's something, it, it teaches kids outright that only they know their true gender. And there's a whole system in the school ready and waiting for them to declare one of their exotic gender identities. And the LGBT population of America seems to be roughly doubling every generation. Gender dysphoria used to afflict 0.01% of the population. Now they're getting, they're getting prescriptions. They're changing the whole course of their lives so easily with no medical oversight. Children are coming out as transgender at an average age of 8.5 years old. We have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to our children? One thing I've learned is that the power of stories to change us is unmatched. It tells us that when you read a story, you're transported into another world. You identify with the character. You take on their reality. You take on their identity. And the new Coco Melon Lane has a boy in a dress dancing for his two gay dad. Just be you. Just be me. Yep. Doesn't it just fill you with pride? Nightshade's pronouns are they, them. They use they, them pronouns? The princess who came to your ball tonight was me. <gasps> I'm Gonzarella. Michael, you look good. You got more style than all of you. I know. My, like, not at all secret gay agenda. Wherever I could, just basically adding queerness. It was like, no one would stop me. Not so much busting down these walls, but just very slowly chipping away at them for years and years and years and years. <laughs> hey, when we're older, let's get married. Since 2010, the number of LGBTQ characters in children's cartoons has skyrocketed to over 250. These papas are non-binary. They love each other so proudly. My heart says that the way I feel most myself is to go by the name Fred. That's because I'm non-binary. So how do we stop our kids from drowning in the lies that pollute every TV show, every movie, and every book they get their hands on? And many of their stories are now of characters with mental health disorders, LGBTQ characters, and characters undergoing sex change operations. It's not a surprise then that our children have mirrored the characters in the books that they're reading. We are discussing things with them that they are not emotionally, intellectually, and morally able to handle. The number of children diagnosed with depression has gone up 27% over the past four years. 
It's not a surprise that the number of boys that want to be girls has increased 2,000% over the past decade. That is what is causing the anxiety. That is what is causing the depression. That is what is causing the confusion. We need our children to be able to be children, to be able to be innocent. If parents today, if they let culture raise their kids, that's a dangerous choice. The crisis is real, friends. <laughs> Our children have to be saved, and that's why we're partnering with Brave Books today. I want to introduce you uh, to our next guest, Kirk Cameron, as you know. <laughs> Number one is a Christian, a follower of Jesus. He's a producer, actor, television, and film icon, and loving husband and father of six. You know, Kurt has made such a great impact uh, through great Christian movies like Fire... Fireproof, The Homeschool Awakening, and Life Mark. And, and Kirk linked arms with Brave Books in December of 2022 and has been a lightning, lighting brush fires of faith and freedom across the country through movements like the National See You at the Library Day. This man's passion for traditional family values in the Bible is unmatched. You know, I mentioned a little while ago about how I was a 13-year-old girl with a Mike Seaver poster on my, on, my t on my wall. But the reality of this man's life laid down from the time he came to Christ. I remember reading stories of how God impacted his heart in those years and growing pains. And to see him go into sharing the gospel around the country with Ray Comfort and truly understanding the, the combination between the gospel which is preeminent as we teach here at Christians Engage in the importance of protecting liberty and teaching biblical worldview to the next generation. Will you welcome Kirk Cameron? Hi, you guys. Great to see you. Great to see you. I'm, uh, wow, that's awfully kind of you to stand up when I came in. I'm not a politician or a clergy member or anything like that. I'm I'm actually honored to be here with you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of floored and blown away when I see Christians who are actually engaged in a culture war and Christians who actually believe that that war can be won because we have a God and an ideology and the correct narrative that's been given to us in the scriptures that actually overpowers the forces of darkness and their false ideologies and narratives and that it's actually possible. So thank you for being here, and uh, this is a great encouragement to me. And uh, I see you guys as the boots on the ground soldiers, the heroes here in Texas. Uh, we need more of, of people like you out in California. We have some. Uh, in fact, we have a lot of Christians out there. Someone once told me, Bunny and I were talking in the back, that perhaps we think it is true that there are more conservative, Christian, Bible-believing patriotic Christians in California than there are in any other state in the country. We have 44, 45 million people, but I meet many of them, and many of them are just not engaged. And part of it, I think, has to do with believing that um, it's supposed to get worse and worse and worse, and therefore they think we're fighting against God if we're trying to right the ship when it's supposed to go over the falls. Um, and then others are just saying, but what do we do? You know, kind of like the Israelites uh, looking at the promised land. They come back and they say, the giants in the land are too big. Hollywood is too big. Big Pharma is too strong. The politics are, are too corrupt. And with the World Economic Forum and everything else, there's just, we, we can't do it. We're going to get crushed. <clears throat> and I see you guys, and uh, I get really excited. Um, I'm, I'm tired of hanging out with whiners I want to roll with winners. Jesus didn't call us to be complainers about the culture, but to be creators of the culture. And I, we could talk all day long. We go back, goes back to the Garden of Eden and the creation mandate, the cultural mandate, and Jesus' admonition to go into all the world and to disciple the nations, to teach them all that he's commanded. And all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. If all authority has been given to Christ, both in heaven and on earth, and he's with us through this discipling the nation's mission, uh, how, how, what are the odds that Satan's going to win? 
I just think, well, none. He has no authority. The keys got taken. He doesn't have authority to the kingdom. And Jesus is saying, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I know I'm on the right team and, and I know I'm with a good group this morning. So thank you for welcoming me and, uh, and Trent, who you can hear from in just a moment. Well, um, I used to, I think, be sort of a, um, an escapist minded lackadaisical Christian in the early days when I was on growing pains. I was just happy to get saved. Couldn't wait to get out of here and just get to heaven. And, uh, I had some really good friends who were teaching me about the pilgrims and the founding fathers and a whole breed of Christian that was a whole different, a whole different a animal than what I normally see around us today. And he would teach me about revivals and great awakenings and how all these things came about during times of moral collapse economic decline, political corruption, and spiritual apathy. I'm thinking we're there right now. And revivals tend to come in intervals of about every 50 years. I don't think we hold God to some sort of a time frame. However, this national setback could be a divine setup for a spiritual comeback led by the family of faith. And so I want to engage with other soldiers in God's loving army of compassion and advance. Some of you may have seen me on the news lately. Uh, we, we've, we've been getting a little bit of attention as uh, we've been writing children's books and, and, and trying to read them for public story hours for little kids at public libraries. And I, read a, I wrote, wrote a book with Brave Books called As You Grow. And it's teaching children how to grow the sweet fruit of the Spirit during the different seasons of their life. Love, joy, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, um, self-control. And I wanted to read it in a public library, and I was denied by over 50 woke libraries that had previously held drag queen story hours for children. Well, I told some friends at the news, I wound up on Tucker Carlson's show while, when he was at Fox, and said that this is the United States of America. I've written letters to these libraries to remind them that viewpoint discrimination and their type of discrimination, which is the worst according to our Constitution, it violates the First Amendment, religious discrimination, is not to be tolerated, and that this is a public library that they're building and their salaries are paid for by their community members, and that if they didn't stop this, this, this wickedness, that I would be prepared to assert my constitutional rights in court. They changed course. We got an invitation to go to those libraries who said to us, we're not interested, the leadership said, your values don't align with ours. We're an inclusive community. We don't think your book and your message and type belongs here, and we're looking for authors of color. So I didn't qualify in, in, in their diversity, equity, and inclusion matrix. But apparently, they're not looking for diversity. They want one message. Uh, apparently, they're not looking for inclusion of guys like me and the thousands of parents that I meet who want to hear this kind of stuff. They're looking for a monoculture and to be very exclusive with that to push an agenda. And I, I understand. I just, I just wish they'd be up, and, up front and honest about it. Um, so we showed up in Indianapolis State, uh, Downtown Library and were greeted by over 3,000 parents and grandparents and children who filled six stories of a downtown public library so much that we were violating fire codes for too many people inside there. The police uh, commissioner said that this was the largest event that the, the, that the library had had in the history of its library of 134 years. And that families had not been down there in a long time because there were so many riots and protests during COVID and the elections and everything down there that moms were afraid to bring their kids and now it was packed full and they were down the escalator, out the door, down the sidewalk, and into the parking lot. And the same reaction was in New York, in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, in Phoenix, and other libraries that we went to that had turned us down. And the, the people would say, can we just sing God Bless America right now in the library? They would gather at the flagpole out front, and they would pray in Jesus' name. We would, we would sing Amazing Grace and other songs, Parents would, would spontaneously turn these gatherings in public library lobbies into worship meetings. And when they couldn't get into the small reading rooms that the libraries gave to us because there was a thousand people out there and a hundred people could fit in the room and there was only two hours to get through everything, instead of rioting 
and throwing, you know, uh, firebombing, you know, the, the, the room or flipping over cop cars because they didn't get what they wanted. The moms just sat down in the aisles between the rows of books in the library, opened up their book bags, and just started reading their own books to their children and creating their own little story times while they sang and they prayed. It was beautiful. It was like little mini revivals happening all over the country. And they're saying, thank you for coming here. We feel marginalized and silenced. Everyone thinks because it's New York, we don't, we don't want these kinds of values. And we do. We want this, but we're being pushed aside. So that encouraged us and fired us up. And we've been traveling around the country and making quite a bit of a, of a splash. Library directors have been fired by their own communities because they're trying to stop us. The American Library Association, uh, headed up by a woman who um, she, uh, consider, she, she, she describes herself uh, uh, as a lesbian Marxist. And she uh, has been on uh, recorded and, and talking about these uh, wanting libraries and schools to be um, Marxist centers for organization uh, for children in the country and they tried to actually stop us in their national seminar from teaching parents how to come read books of Christian virtue uh, and faith to their children in their own public libraries. And so uh, this has been exciting because it's been waking people up and people are getting involved. Well now we recognize that we really need to go after the head of the snake. Uh, these books that you're seeing and reading about, they're being published by large companies. The largest of them is Scholastic. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they have now gone so far uh, into bed with the devil that they're publishing books that can only be described as pornography for children, teenagers, uh, complete with instruction manuals, you know, underage drinking, clothes off, uh, needles to inject hormones, to change your gender, hide things from your parents, the whole thing taking little kids into the world of drag and, and all of this. And so we launched uh, a, an alternative book fair nonprofit organization called SkyTree. And already over a thousand schools are canceling their contracts with Scholastic Books and replacing their book fairs with, non, with a nonprofit Christian alternative. So this is all really exciting. You guys, it's like the, the, heart, the, the fields are ripe for harvest for salvation, but also for cultural and societal reform. I'm excited to see that, for people to put feet to their faith. Uh, I'm from Hollywood, the land of make-believe. Uh, the enemy has captured the power of story and understands that if you can transport children into another realm of belief and give them characters that they can love and empathize with, they identify with those characters. In the last 12 years, there's been over 253% increase in lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, non-binary, queer, regular series characters for children in mainstream programming for kids. They did a study um, of 140 undergraduate college students recently, divided them up into two groups, and told them that uh, this group was to read the, the, the book series Twilight about the vampires, and then this book group to read um, Harry Potter, the Sorcerer and the Stone uh, about witchcraft. And after they had read for a half an hour, the students who had read a few chapters of Harry Potter believed that uh, they, they, they rated themselves higher than other people pertaining to their ability for telekinesis, moving things with the power of their mind. And those students who had read a few chapters of Twilight believed that the length of their teeth was longer than the general population. The power of story is real. And we want to identify with the role models that we're given. That's what heroes are all about. That's why we want role models for our kids. But that power can be turned on its head and used for evil. And now, in the years 2020, 2021, there has been an increase in people identifying themselves as gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual, non-binary of 50% in the last couple of years. In fact, the Gen Z has gone double 
for identifying in those categories from the millennial generation. And the anxiety and depression and all of this stuff is resulting in attempted suicides to the point where in 2021, there was a 50% rise in suspected attempted suicides as told by the ER doctors for girls in the United States of America. So this is real. We've got to tell the right stories. We've got to give them the right characters to identify with and to emulate their lives after. We know that identity in Christ is where, we, where it's found. That's where health is found. And so we want to tell the right stories. I'm super excited about working with Brave Books because not only are they writing books like this, but they're now um, taking these stories to the next level, and they've created a television program for kids. Uh, before I announce uh, exactly what it's all about, there's some clues here in the room. Uh, there's someone who's very special uh, who wanted to announce the story uh, himself. And so I'm just going to let you watch the video and, and, and turn it over to my friend. I'm Kirk Cameron. Come with me. My friends and I have an announcement to make. Hey, Kirk. Hey. Oh, hey, friends. I'm Lee Allen Baker. And we have something super exciting for you. Did you tell him yet, Mr. Kirk? Did you tell him? <laughs> Remember what we learned about patience? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Kirk. I'm just so excited. <laughs> we all are. We all are. As I was saying, we have uh, some... Mr. Kirk, Mr. Kirk, have you seen my safety goggles? Um... <laughs> They're on your head. Oh, of course. Thanks, Mrs. Lee. Do you know what that was all about? No clue. Okay, we're really excited to announce we are making a brand new children's what? Iggy, what are you doing? Sorry, I was just getting ready for the big announcement. The treehouse isn't going to build itself. Did you tell them yet? Did you? No, 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 we haven't told them yet. Would you just like to tell them yourself, Iggy? What, little old me? Tell everyone one of the most amazing, most important, most groundbreaking announcements ever recorded in the history of the world? <gasps> That's a lot of pressure. What if I mess up? There are probably millions of people watching me right now. You can do it, Icky. I believe in you. Okay, here it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and squirrels. <laughs> We're teaming up with Brave Books to make Drum roll, please. A kids' TV show called Adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. Yay! 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 <laughs> well, we're super excited about Adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. And I can't wait for you to hear the theme song. I really wish we had the theme song. We could play it for him. But uh, we've got this iconic um, um, songwriter out of Nashville. And uh, can I tell him who, who, who it is? Yeah, it's, it's the guy that wrote the song, uh, My Wish. My Wish. Uh, you know that great song? I can't sing. I'm not going to try. Um, but it's so good. It's, it's just a great song. And, um, and, and so get this. Imagine a TV show for children um, that has the, the timeless moral values and lessons from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, only modernized with high energy, hilarious dialogue, beautiful animation that actually animates these beautifully illustrated stories that we have already written through Brave Books with pro-God, pro-America values. And new guest stars... Surprise celebrities who are joining in. Uh, we, we have so many different authors of these books who also want to be in the television program. So Lee Allen Baker from Good Luck Charlie, Disney's program. Then there's Riley Gaines, and then there's the Robertsons from Duck Dynasty, and so many other people who are uh, partnering with us in all of these episodes. So, uh, plus we've got a guy who is actually making and operating a puppet that has worked with Jim Henson for all of these years, uh, working with the creators of Elmo, and the puppet is amazing. Iggy is just hilarious and adorable and endearing. The kids are gonna love him. And so it's a live action show with me and Lee Allen Baker and other surprise guest stars with Iggy, the puppet, um, it's musical, it's hilarious, and we're in a treehouse in Mr. Kirk's backyard where Iggy lives in his little hammock, and there is a supercomputer that he has built, and it's a 
portal that launches you into Freedom Island, which is where all the stories take place for the Brave Books. So the over 30 stories and all the universe and cast of characters know each other and all the stories fit together. And every one of the books is going to be turned into an episode. So you have episodes about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. You have a book about the, the sanctity of life. Little lives matter. This is absolutely, wonderfully, beautifully written. Elephants are not birds. This is a book about gender reality where Kevin the elephant, check this out. This is, this is the brilliance of their writers. So Kevin is an elephant who is, has a really talented singing voice. And culture, the vulture, shows up and says to Kevin that perhaps, Kevin, you really ought to be a bird. And because birds like to sing, here, here's a set of wings and a beak. Why don't you strap these, these prosthetic devices on and go hang out with the birds? And so Kevin thinks this might be his true identity. He climbs up in the trees and he's breaking all the branches as his heavy body climbs up the trees. And then he tries to fly with the rest of the birds and actually falls and hurts himself. But then the tree catches on fire because of culture the vulture, and they're wishing if only there was some creature who was big and strong and could carry a big bucket of water from the lake up to the tree who had some sort of a device that could squirt the water up into the branches and put it out. All of a sudden, Kevin, Kevin understands why he was designed the way that he is, and he saves the day, and he's the hero to all of his friends. This is, these will be episodes of the TV show, and perhaps one of my favorites is the Island of Free Ice Cream. This warns children about the dangers of socialism. The Island of Free Ice Cream. They have this wonderful f market on this island where all the animals can make their own things and sell them to everybody else, and they can um, make a profit and do all the things that they want to do equally and freely. But then the wolves show up and they say, you know, some of you have bigger booths at the market than other people, and all of you are working hard just as much as everybody else. Why does this guy have a bigger booth than you? Well, it's because he actually works really hard day and night and invents lots of things and is doing really well. And he, the wolves say, we have a place called Utopia. We want you to come to Utopia where we have ice cream for everybody and it's absolutely free because you all deserve it. And they end up buying into the whole idea and they get rid of the guy who's making all the great products and things who has the biggest booth and make him the scapegoat, the bad guy. Everybody goes to this Utopia island and they find out it's a dark and dingy place full of shadows where people are waiting in long lines to eat. They have nothing to eat. And behind the curtain is a bunch of wolves who are secretly just relishing in the fact that they have stolen all the food from Freedom Island and they're enjoying lavish feasts behind the curtain. And it's only when they blow the whistle back at Freedom Island and let the other animals know that there is no free ice cream. There is no utopia. The, the best opportunity for a good life is here on Freedom Island, that they're able to bust the whole thing up and get back to what's good and beautiful and true. These are the kinds of episodes coming out for kids. So you can see why I'm fired up about this and I'm, I'm leaning all in. Now, Brave Books is, is taking the bull by the horns to make this show. They're not attached to Hollywood, and they are not relying on some big studio to fund it, like Netflix or Hulu or something else, right? Because there's always strings attached. That's why all these companies go woke, is because all the money is flowing from the top down. Well, for them, they're like, we're doing this from the bottom up. Just like The Chosen, if we want something like that to be produced, we have to make it ourselves. Nobody else is going to be committed to the content and to the standard. Uh, and the hardest part about it is, um, is the funding. Because you've got to have it all. You've got to have great ideas. You've got to have a vision for it and believe it can work. You've got to put the staff together. You've got to actually have the funding to be able to go make it. And then you've got to be able to distribute it and let everybody know that it's out there. And it takes money to do all of that. So they're having a fundraiser 
and we're wanting to do what The Chosen did, and we want to get people to fund something, and when everybody pitches in, all of a sudden, it's like, boom. It's just overflow from generosity, and it's a joy. It's not, it's, it, you're not twisting people's arms. Uh, they just have to believe and buy in, and that's where we as the family of faith have to come together and fix this, because I don't think anybody else is. I think it's revival or bust, and we've got to get to the children. We got to get to the children. If we don't get to them, we lose the future. Whoever plays the long game and tells the stories gets to control what our future leaders th think about who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. So that's what we're doing. I want to bring up Trent Talbot, the creator, founder, CEO of Brave Books. Thank you, Kirk. That was awesome. Um, okay, yeah, so we're doing a, we're fundraising for, and, and I don't want y'all to tell anybody because it's not open to the public. We announce on Glenn Beck's show Monday morning, Kirk's going to be there, um, but we're, we're kicking things off a little early. We couldn't wait to, to get started. So we're fundraising for this TV show, but um, a, a dirty secret when it comes to fundraising for creatives out there is you know, the most common way they do it is they ask people to invest, and they sort of have projections and 10-year return, but typically, it's just not typically a money maker. And so we didn't want to go that route. I don't like the idea of having people lose their money. And so we, we created um, a fundraising thing that's really cool where, where we're creating these once-in-a-lifetime experiences and, and products. So, so if, you, if you decide to support it, you're going you're gonna to get what you pay for, and, and you'll know what you're getting. Um, so, so anyway... When I go like this, maybe go to the next slide. So I'll, I'll walk you all through it. Hey, Trent, I was yeah. thinking may, maybe we should tell them that the, that the goal is we're, we want to fund 20 episodes, yeah, which is sorry. the first two years, yeah. and kind of the rollout plan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the vision for the TV shows, we're doing 20 episodes. They're about 22 minutes of length with, with each episode. Each episode teaches a different, you know, biblical foundational value that's important to our kids, like sanctity of life and all those that Kirk mentioned. Um, we, we, we're already building the set. We are planning to shoot, have it all scheduled for May to June. It's gonna, we're trying to knock it out in about a month. And, um, and we want to launch in the second week of August. We, we, we've actually already scheduled a red carpet premiere. We're putting our foot to the fire, like we're going to make this happen. Um, our goal is to raise $2.5 million. $1.4 million is that, of that is to go to make the TV show. And then 1.1 is to market and make sure that every single family with kids that in the three to five age range knows about it. And we've got a really, really rock solid plan to, to make sure that everybody hears about it. We're gonna go and target, we've got ways of targeting families. And if somebody's watching Coco Melon or, you know, or Blues Clues or some of these shows that may not be as good for them, we're gonna go and we're gonna make sure that they hear about Adventures with, with Iggy and Mr. Kirk, and make make the case for why they shouldn't be watching these shows and why they need to be watching Adventures with, with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. So, the, our, our the worst the worst thing that could happen with this project is we put our heart and soul into it, and it doesn't make the difference that that we want it to. So, so that's our plan. Feel really good about it. Um, but but yeah, in order to to make it happen, we're going to need some support. And and so let me sort of walk y'all through what we're doing. Um, any any amount of support, we're just be so, totally grateful. We've got different levels. Versus uh, is what we're calling the coffee tier. tier. Uh, Twenty five dollars, you get you get um, e cards, exclusive access to behind the scenes content. We'll give you updates on how scripts are going, how the shoots going. It'll be cool, just behind the scenes um, intel. The studio tier. So we're 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 shooting this this in uh, College Station, Texas. We've got an independent independent production company. That's really good. We feel really good about them, um, and and you know it, it, they cost a lot of money. And so so uh, well, hold on one second. Yeah. So if you pay a hundred dollars, you basically get lifetime access to the show. But we're creating an app, have our own. Um, you, you'll be able to access it there. We're also putting five episodes um, on YouTube, Rumble, anywhere that you can access it for free. Just so we want we want people to to be able to access it for free get sold, you we want to show them how, how great it is, and they want, then the, eventually they'll want all the episodes. Um, 
And, we, and you get our Saga One eBooks and audiobooks. Okay, the puppeteer. So, um, so it, it, every every tier sort of builds on itself. If you if you do the 250, you get you obviously get access to to all the episodes. Um, you get a plush puppet, a a uh, early access to season one and two. So before anybody else sees it, um, a Saga One collector's box, as well as our our uh, Saga One biblical worldview curriculum course. That's that's really good. We're we're we're, we're gonna work our tail off promoting it with PR marketing, but we don't want to leave leave anything to chance. We're going around the country to 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 fundraise to to sort of build a grassroots movement behind it, and so that'll cost some money. So that, that's where this tier would go go towards. Um, with it, you get a personalized thank you card from Kirk, and our Saga Two Collectors Box. So um, you know, like our our philosophy here is is you know the retail value for the saga one and the saga two collector's box and and like you know a lifetime access to adventures of mr kirk it's actually over 500 dollars and the plush puppet and all that stuff so we're we're really not we're trying to make everything in a way to where you don't feel like you're you're just giving it like you're you're getting something of value in return yes the lights camera action at a thousand you get your name listed on the supporters page of our website um, you get a personalized cameo from Lee Allen Baker and, and Iggy. So my my kids are blessed enough to to get um, little cameos from Iggy the iguana, and uh, and they love him so much. That's really all they ask. They want to hear our 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 theme song um, for Adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk, and they wanted to watch this video where where Iggy's talking to them. Hey Titus. Hey Charlotte. <laughs> and, uh, and so it, it'll it'll be something that that um, that your kids or grandkids really really treasure, uh, and a signed copy of Kirk's book that comes out in the fall. Okay, so with this one, your 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 name will actually be on the credits of the TV show, and and our our goal, Kirk, is we want this to be we want this to be a on the level of, of Mr. Rogers that stays with culture for decades and decades and decades. And when, when your kids are grand, our grandparents, they're going back and they're having their kids watch it. And, and, you know, it'd be cool. Just whenever, whenever you see your grandkids, watch it, you see your name on the credits. Um, and then we're doing a virtual Q and a with, with Kirk and the whole, whole crew that, you know, y'all can ask questions and things like that. Um, so the VIP tier. So we have a few more after that, um, and I and I and I totally understand that that we're starting to talk about some some big dollar amounts and 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 something that um, that people have been interested in is is hey if I own my own business is there a way that I could that I could um, pay through the business you know and and use it as a marketing expense and maybe get some co promotion and so so we've we've actually worked that into. To some of these higher level tiers in which in which you could sort of write it off as a marketing expense we've got an extremely low following you know we've got over thirty thousand people that get our books every month we've we've got an email list of over four hundred thousand um we 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 have the ability to, to send you know put in inserts into our into our books we send out over forty thousand books a month um and we can highlight on this on this um church tour that we're going on so if you have a business this is something that that you may want to consider it's sort of a win-win we, we can get the word out on, on what you're doing and then we get support for the show so just want to let y'all know that um yeah so we're we're doing we're doing our red carpet premiere in nashville tennessee on august the 8th at the james polk theater it's it's the nicest theater in town and and it's going to be a really really special event we're going to be showing the the episode our, our pilot episode which is going to be on our first book, Little Lives Matter, Sanctity of Life. I get I get choked up when I think about the script and how how kids and grandkids are gonna be learning about the sanctity of life through story. It's gonna be it's gonna be really sweet. Um, and then you get meet and greet with Kirk, Lee Allen, all the other co stars are working on some big names to to make, make appearances. Um, yeah. So what's next? Okay. So we're having a laughter party after the red cover premiere for, for this year. It's, it's a big number. Um, it's at the home of an iconic 
country music legend. I'm not supposed to say who it is, but it's John Rich. <laughs> and uh, he's going to be performing and, and hanging out and you know, singing Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy, and uh, some of his hits. And, and um, it'll be a great time. He's got, he's got, he's got, the, he's got the tall, his house is actually the tallest building in all of Nashville. <laughs> and uh, it's the tallest point in Nashville. He's got this guitar-shaped pool and so that'd be a cool story, I guess, to come back and, and tell. Uh, and, uh, and then the last one, there's 25 of those available, and it comes with two tickets. And, and the last one, we're doing this really cool, I guess there's two more. We're doing a, uh, our Duck Commander experience in which, in which Missy and Jace have been kind enough to, to um, l let people come and stay at, 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 at their estate that they have, a beautiful, beautiful piece of property, you get you get to go to um, Duck Commander store and and uh, get a custom duck call and and uh, and most likely go to church with some of the Robertsons and Phil, Phil teaches a, uh, a a Sunday morning class and and so really cool experience that that we're putting together for this tier. Oh, and it comes with this uh, custom shotgun. <laughs> so, <laughs> So, so, so you can get it whatever you want. Maybe you want your favorite sports team. Maybe you want your business, whatever it is. Um, but we, I, I'm good friends with this company that, that does all sorts of really cool designs. And so they're going to throw that in. So, uh, all right, last one. Kirk, do you want to you talk about how you got your start? Oh, sure. Well, so, so again, all of these, so like even the Duck Commander experience, that is at that tier plus everything that was that you were told about before all comes with it as well, right? So you get to go to the VIP, to the red carpet premiere, and all, all of that stuff. Each one is that plus more. So this one here is um, essentially you can have your child or your grandchild or someone that you want a niece and nephew who can actually play a minor role in one of the episodes of the TV shows. So this is their chance to become a star. Uh, I started when I was nine years old. And, um, you know, the, the, the Lord had plans, uh, even when I was back there like this. Thank you. Uh, so, this is uh, the Future Star tier. All the previous awards, uh, plus um, visit the set with your child playing a role. And afterward, we're going gonna to have a legitimate camp, American Campfire Revival uh, worship meeting there. Maybe some of you saw some of the American Campfire Revival meetings that I did oh, during the lockdowns uh, from my backyard on Facebook, where we went through the history of America and the application of the gospel to civil society. Uh, so we're going to do all of that for this tier here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, that's it. Um, we're, we're just, we'd be so totally thrilled with any any level of support but um yeah just thank y'all for coming out and and thank you for hearing this our our project idea and the tears we're excited so um to, to wrap a bow on it if if you're if you're interested in supporting you can go to to that qr code at watchbrave.com and you can you can uh support there you can also write a check if you're in if you're have a business and you want to talk to um us about what that looks like uh, you can talk to Walker in the black right there. Uh, he's, he's the guy to talk to. Do all of you know how to use the, to, to, to get that QR code on your phone? I'm 50 and I, I got, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm generationally challenged. Um, <laughs> point your phone up to that QR code and a little thing will come up, take you to the website. Yeah. And it'll all be right there. Yeah, just put it on, put your camera on that QR code. Oh, sorry. Sorry, people are saying boom. We need to get out of your way. This chair might be in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. So, yeah, just put your camera up there, tap on it, it'll take you to the website. And you could bookmark it for later if you want or, or, or whatever. Oh, you've also got the QR code on your, uh, your flyer that you have in your lap. If you have that piece of paper, the QR code is on the back, <laughs> along with all the tiers to remind you what's inside each of those packages. But thank you so very much for your interest and for your, for your support in advance. Yeah. So we're going to do a few minutes of a Q&A if you guys, I know we're running a little late, but I wanted to ask them some questions related to America, the gospel, um, and then really just show how our two ch 
uh, ministries are aligned in so many ways. So um, thank you guys for doing this. And we might take a couple, two questions from the audience um, as well. But, you know, Kurt, I, again, I, in my intro of you, I talked about just your passion for the gospel and just going out on the streets with Ray Comfort and all the things you've done to really promote um, Jesus in this country. But when did you like really start engaging um, for liberty? Why did you see that the gospel and liberty to be protected was connected? Well, I, I, I didn't in the beginning, but as time has gone on, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, someone began to point out the connection to me of the gospel and its ability to restore our relationship with God, to break the power of sin and reconcile us to God. But as God is reconciling the world to himself, um, there is a, a, a cultural application to the word of God that can only be accomplished by people who have been restored in their hearts. So the revival starts here, then the revival begins to spread to my marriage. All of a sudden, I can take a family that's dead in sin and addiction and all these other types of things, and that can be brought to life, and an entire society can be brought out of darkness into the light. And I believe that that's what Great Awakenings are, are all about, and that is part of uh, the plan. It's not just a get out of hell free card and get everybody into the lifeboat before the Titanic sinks. Yes. Amen. So we need to be praying, voting, and engaging regularly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sorry. I have a nice little, segue. I have a little tagline we've, you know, copyrighted. Um, so, CEO, yes. um, talk to us about a biblical worldview because George Barna had a report in 2021 that 50% of American Christians think they have a biblical worldview, but really only 3% actually do. I know you are sacrificed everything in your life to train the next generation. Why is that so important for us to dive deep in the Bible and to go deep into and train our kids? Well, our, our worldview dictates everything that we say and do and how we interpret everything around us. And, and it's, it's, our, it's, our frame, it's our operating system as we navigate this world. And, and it really is instilled in us at an early age. Um, now, I, I was saved at, at 32 years old. So, um, you know, the gospel can do wonders. But, but, but our, our, really, if you, if, you look at, if you look at development, our, the base of our morality is instilled at an early age. And so Brave Books, our, our whole thing is, you know, we, we capture the child's attention with maps and stories and fun characters and, 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 um, and then while we're telling these stories, we, we, we sort of slip in these, these values that, that, and, and morality that help, that helps build that, build that character and that morality. And then, and then like in the back of the books, we have discussion questions so the parents can really hammer it home. And, and for the show, our, our strategy is for every episode, we sort of pick a topic, we pick a theme, First one is the sanctity of life, and and during the live action portion, which will be about probably 15 minutes of the show, um, Iggy is most likely going to be struggling with, with sort of this question, like what does it mean, and 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 it's going to be the theme that drives the live action portion, and then he, he'll be sort of learning. Kirk will be guiding him through examples and and um, lessons throughout the show, and and then the lesson will be cemented by the reading, the animated reading of Little Lives Matter. And, and then that's whenever it sort of clicks. And hopefully that's when it clicks for the kids watching too. Um, and yeah, it's important. It's important, it's important. Well, um, Kirk, we got to share a little bit about what we do backstage, but we you know, train people with our classes on how to get engaged civically and also biblical worldview training. But we wanna train Christians to get involved with politics and government, but to do it with a right spirit, right? To be brave, but do it as Christ followers, right? Loving people with yeah. compassion in our eyes. Um, how, how do you help people? Because you've suffered <laughs> and had some persecution in this realm. How do we engage a hostile culture as believers uh, and keep our heart right? Yeah. Uh, well, one, one of the things that I like to remind myself of and my friends is that we don't really live in a, in a culture that is hostile to the gospel. That may provoke some of you, uh, and it's, it's meant to, because when I think of first century Christianity, second century Christianity, you have Christians being thrown to lions, uh, 
uh, skewered on poles and lit on fire to illuminate gladiatorial games, sawn in half. And we read all these things in the scriptures during that first century of the spread of the church. The reason that we think of ourselves as being persecuted now is because the norm, the, the plumb line, just, just par for the course for us is be nice to each other. Yeah. Well, that's a very advanced Christian concept that is so far departured from paganism of first century Roman Empire that we think it preposterous that we have LGBTQ characters up here when um, sexual immorality and paganism was the norm in other uh, eras. So it can get much, much worse than this. And persecution already is much further down the road in other countries like in the Middle East and other types of places. But having said that, um, that, that reminds me that we have a great legacy and a great history. Um, we have a, a chain of freedom documents and we have martyrs that have shed their blood for the advancement of the gospel. And we have the spread of the church and we have the truth and Bible teaching and the spirit of God. And so we've got everything behind us. We have the wind at our backs pushing us forward in this advance and expansion of the kingdom. And uh, I think that the gospel has victory written all over it, not defeat, not just in heaven, but here on earth. And I, I'm going to leave, I'm going to end with, with this quote from John, uh, I'm sorry, um, Noah Webster, who gave us the Webster's Dictionary. He was a, a founding father, the father of American education. And he said this, he said, with regard to politics and Christianity, uh, to, to, to your question, he said, Every civil government is based on some religion or foundational philosophy. The education of that nation propagates the religion of that nation. In America, that foundational religion was Christianity. And it was sown into the hearts of its people for two centuries through the home and the school, public and private. Our prosperity, our growth, and our freedom is the result of a biblical way of life. And our future success and, 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 and liberty depends on continuing to teach our children the principles of Christianity. And so the gospel and government go hand in hand. Amen. We have to understand that you can't divorce one from the other because someone's values will reign supreme. And... Uh, the government that you see on the outside reflects the worldview of the people on the inside. And that's why those who fought in the American Revolution could say things like John Adams when asked about the revolution. He said, what revolution are you talking about? He said, the war? Oh, that wasn't the revolution. The revolution that took place happened long before the first bullet was ever fired. It was a revolution that took place in the hearts of the men and women. It was a revolution of religious sentiment. And that's what gave them the courage and gave them the resolve to know that their cause was just and that they were fighting for the right thing and that God and the winds of providence would be at their back. And they trusted him and were able to then go on to develop um, perhaps the greatest political system in the world and the greatest nation that's ever existed. So we've got to put feet to our faith. We've got to let what's on the inside manifest on the outside from my house all the way up to the White House. Amen. Beautiful. Woo, that'll preach. I appreciate Kirk Cameron coming to my book release party. No. <laughs> I'm excited so my about book her book. Came out. Read this Many book. of y'all know, but my book came out Tuesday, guys. Jesus and Politics. One Woman's Walk with God in a Mudslinging Profession. So I'll be back. If you haven't got a copy, I will be selling them. And please tell people, review them on Amazon. But we hit number one in two categories on Amazon this last week. Uh, thank God for the 700 Club is all I got to say. I love the 700 Club. What a dream that was um, to be on the 700 Club. Anyway, um, so we're going to take a couple questions. We're going to make this quick uh, to honor these guys' time. But if anybody has a question, raise your hand real fast. Come over. This may be a little bit ambitious because I know you guys are just getting started, um, but it looks really exciting. I have older kids, eight and ten. Um, they seem to know the value. They know the values. But I think what you were saying, connecting to characters and things like that. Any plans for trying to reach sort of that teen demographic in the future, or do you have any suggestions or places to kind of go in the meantime um, that you would, you know, recommend for connecting with those characters that are kind of dealing with? Yeah, great, great question. We are currently 
underway on our middle grade series. So we're, we're doing a big, uh, we're doing 60 middle grade books. <laughs> and, uh, and so um, it's underway. I think it's going to be released late 2025, um, early 2026. Um, as far as other, other resources, I, well, that's for books. For, for screens, you know, we're really dialed into this. We, we view this as, you know, the name of the game for Brave Books is it's all about trust with parents and trust not only just that, hey, our, our books are solid and, and they don't have any bad ideals in them, but that they're top-notch quality. And so this is our first foray into, into screen and we want to just knock it out of the park and continue to build that trust with parents. And then if we do that, then it's gonna set us up to get into all sorts of bigger things, like potentially um, an animated Freedom Island show, you know, the, um, sort of of the Pixar style. So yeah, we've got big plans. We're, like I was saying earlier, we like a fight, but we're not here to fight, we're here to win. And if we're gonna do that, you gotta, you gotta hit the teens, you gotta hit the, uh, the preteens, and you got to have it all. And we're, that's what we're trying to build. Well, and I want to honor Trent because no one has an idea how hard it is to pioneer something out of nothing. And I just want to say thank you for doing this, brother. Really. Thank you. Really. Until you've lived it, you have no idea all the hours that it takes. Awesome. Yeah. Come on. Doesn't it sound exciting, Hello. you guys? <laughs> not, not the fly fishing trip, but... But the TV show and what we're doing, right? Because if we don't do this, I, seriously, who's going to do it? I mean, are we just waiting for Elon Musk to do it? Are we waiting for Bill Gates to do it or Trump to do it? I mean, these guys, you know, and, and whoever else, like they can do what God's called them to do, whether they know God's using them or not, to do whatever they can do. But when it comes to our kids, God's given them to us. We need to do this. Amen. Amen. Well, and y'all know, this is why I started Christians Engage, because I, I don't look that old, but I'm a grandma now. <laughs> and we have a responsibility to the next generation. So, you know, I quit my political consulting career. I was making double the amount of money I am right now um, to go awaken and motivate and empower the body of Christ around America to do these three simple things. Because if we don't do it now, guys, when are we going to do it? It's, it's now or never. So we're just so thankful for our partnership with Brave Books. So blessed, you guys. And um, we're going to close it out. Um, but will you please give Trent and Kirk an awesome round of applause. So my final announcements, and then Ben Quine, Ben, can you come on? If y'all do not know, if y'all have connected with us and seen our amazing teaching, Ben Quine is our new Vice President of Christians Engage. <laughs> ben has helped us develop biblical economics, biblical uh, justice classes, and done all of our curriculum and strategic ministry partnership work. So Ben, I think me and you did about 100 pastors meetings last year. It was amazing. So God is moving, guys. And let me just say, the, even pastors are getting revived. It's awesome. But I want to remind you, if you're new to Christians Engaged, this is how you get involved. Number one, we're going to put it up. Take the pledge to play, pray, vote, and engage. In your booklet, there is that card. Or do it on the QR code, okay? But make the commitment. Oh, Shelly's back there with the card. Turn it into Shelly or put it in the buckets, Okay. But take the pledge to pray, vote, and engage. We're not going to overwhelm your inbox. We just send a weekly prayer with our pray, vote, and engage email. And then you get voting reminders around every election in the country, four texts and four emails. This is for everybody you know, guys. So if you know people in battleground states, if you know people all over the country, get them to take the pledge to pray, vote, and engage. We're going to build to a million Christians in this system by the presidential election. That's how we change the country. Amen? Secondly, if you haven't taken our on-ramp to civic engagement seminar, this is the class, six and a half hours of how to love Jesus and how to get involved in politics, um, but also how to get to know your elected officials, how to advocate, how to make a difference. And then check out all of our other classes um, that you can see on the screen. All of our classes, guys, are $29. You keep them forever, um, but you can use these also in your churches, and you can be an area leader with Christians Engage and te teach them in your home, okay? 
Thirdly, my book just came out, so help me with Jesus and politics. <laughs> so we've got books back here. I'll sign them, but please help me with reviews. Help us get the word out. This is so game-changing for us because now I get to tell my whole story to everybody that buys the book. You know how many phone calls I take a day? It's like a thousand calls a day. Y'all know how it is to just tell your story over and over again. So excited about that. And then help us fund a movement. Uh, we want to invite you also into the Christians Engaged story. If you're not a monthly donor, if you're not helping us reach Christians, we can reach one Christian that's awakening for 40 cents. For less than 50 cents, we can find a Christian and plug them into our system, okay? So help us reach a million Christians before the presidential. And there's buckets for y'all to put the pledge cards, sign up with Brave Books. I want to reiterate how important this project is. If we don't do it now, when are we going to do it, friends? When are we going to do it? So together, we're going to make a difference, pioneering things that didn't exist so that we help the next generation of believers activate for this important moment. Ben, will you lead us in prayer as we close out? And thank you all for taking a long, lengthy lunch break. Thank you, Bunny. What a joy to be here with you all. Thank you to everyone who's come out. Just honored to partner with you. Thrilled to partner with Trent. Thrilled to partner with you, Kurt. Thank you, guys. Uh, I want to close this out with a, a quick reading of Psalm 124. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord had not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive with their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler's snare. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. Lord, we praise you that you are our hope, that you are the maker of heaven and earth, and Lord, you're unstoppable. Thank you that you have called us by your love into your family, that you paid the price that we never could pay, that we could be reconciled to you. And now, Lord, in your good pleasure, you have called us to good works that you even preordained. Your word says that you prepared in advance that we would walk in those good works. And Lord, we just praise you for this new show. We praise you for brave books and the boldness that they're taking to take this step. And we pray, Lord, that you would pour out your favor on this show, that you would raise the funds, that you would continue to give them uh, great creativity and just skill, Lord, in this, in this endeavor. Lord, we pray that, um, that you would rescue our children. Our hope is in you for our children. Our hope is in you for our families. Our hope is in you for our country. And we pray again that you would rec rescue us. We know that if you are not on our side, there is no hope. But with you, nothing can stand against us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this incredible podcast. What in the time we've had. We love you so much. We love being in your life. Have you subscribed? Have you shared this with your family and friends? Please subscribe on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, Rumble, wherever you get your audio or video pods. We need your help. This mission is undergirded by individuals just like you that support this ministry monthly, annually, and whenever you think about us to be able to reach over a million Christians in the next two years. That's our goal. We want to empower a million Christians around America to pray, vote, and engage regularly. Will you help us? We're here to do that, and we need your help. I want to say thank you to our partners at The Stream. What an incredible online publication put out by James Robinson and Life Outreach International as we come together across denominational lines as believers to discern what God's saying about the news of the day and to hear from different viewpoints. Check out the stream, make it your homepage, and get on their email list. This product is amazing. Also, our partners at Edify app, put out by Christian Post. This podcast app is a convergence of Bible teachers around America. We're excited to be a part of Edify app. Check out all their other podcasts. Thank you so much again for caring about this nation. We're here to help you pray, vote, and engage. We'll see you next week.